Okay, so, so far, we've been following two different stories. We've been following the story with the B-cell, and how the B-cell became partially active when it, uh, uh, when it, it ran into this virus that stimulated its, uh, its, its antibody receptor, its, its B-cell receptor. But it isn't fully active yet. It only got the first key. And we've been studying this antigen presenting cell, which ran into a virus and presented the viral antigen over to a, a T cell, a helper T cell, and activated that helper T cell. Now, it's pretty safe to activate helper T cells, mostly because helper T cells can't make antibodies. So there's a limit to the amount of damage that they can do to you. Um, they can only, you know, they can't make antibodies, so they're not going to cause an autoimmune disorder. All right, so they're pretty safe to activate with just one key. Now we're going to take our two stories and merge them. So. Here we have a lymph node, right? This is one of the lymph nodes that the activated helper T cell spread to. Remember at the end of our last video, the helper T cell, oops. When it became activated, it started replicating and then one, a whole bunch of, of effector helper T cells went and spread out to a whole bunch of different locations of the body. This is one of those. This is some other lymph node that it's hanging out in. And our B cell shows up, right? Because the B cell, which became partially active and displayed this uh, antigen on its MHC2, right? Uh, well, where's it gonna go? It needs confirmation. It needs that second key. And it knows it needs to get it from a helper T cell. So it's gonna go where the helper T cells live, into the lymph node or some other part of the lymphatic system. And honestly, B cells spend a lot of time in the lymphatic system and in, in, in lymph nodes anyways. This B cell shows up in the lymph node. This is partially active. It's not fully active yet. It's it's just received that one key, that one signal, and it gets to the lymph node, and it goes, oh my God, there's a helper T cell here. Sweet. Forces unite. And you see these little stars that went across? Well, when the B cell matches up with the helper T cell, right? And the antigen that it is displaying matches up with the antigen cleft, and the MHC2 matches up with the CD4 portion, then the helper T cell will begin secreting cytokines, um, interleukins in this case, mostly. And those interleukins that it releases are going to go across, and they will provide the second key to the B cell. So now, this B cell is going to become fully and truly active. And so this active B cell is going to start replicating into uh, mostly a bunch of plasma cells. And then they're going to do what plasma cells do. They're going to go out and make a whole bunch of antibodies and save your life. Mostly. Actually, right now, they're only making one type of antibody. So we'll see in a second, the stories of the B cell and the helper T cells are not quite over yet. The B cell is now making antibodies that could save you, but it could be doing it much better. And the helper T cell is going to help the B cell because it's a helper, uh, and it's going to help the B cell become a better uh, antibody maker.